This unit covers enterprise asset management and customer service. And I think it's important, of course, to begin by describing what exactly these two topics are. Enterprise asset management is nothing but plant maintenance. So any manufacturing company is going to have a lot of machines, uh, machinery, plant, and so on. And these have to be maintained. There's got to be routine maintenance done on these, uh, these objects or these assets. And uh, there's also preventive maintenance and breakdown maintenance that has to be performed on these assets. And there are lots of important business processes associated with these activities. And that's really what enterprise asset management is all about. Now, we know that every SAP module has a two letter. Most of them have a two letter short uh, acronym. And for sales and distribution, for example, it was SD. For material purchasing, it was materials management MM. For production manufacturing, it was uh, PM. Uh, not, not PM, it was, uh, uh, what is that? It was uh, a PP and so on. And for enterprise asset management, the module is actually PM, plant maintenance, PM. Okay, that's the first part of this particular module. The second part of this module is customer service. Now, why did they lump both of these together? Well, in one sense, both of these are service activities. They're not product manufacturing activities, they're service activities. In one, the service is provided to an internal entity within the organization, which is plant maintenance. In the second one, service is provided to an external entity, which is a customer. So there are a lot of overlaps and similarities between these two business processes. And that's why SAP has just lumped both of them into one unit just for the purpose of this course. Okay, so asset management, as I've already pointed out, is plant maintenance. Here's a picture of a plant. And uh, what I'm really trying to point out here is a plant is need not just be a single machine. It can be a huge, complex, large machine within which there are lots of smaller machines that are part of this larger machine. Okay, so that's what you're seeing here, pretty large machine. Okay, so enterprise asset management, as I've already said, is just the maintenance of plant and machinery. Now, there are some important organization elements or organization levels that are specific to enterprise asset management. Uh, there are, of course, the general things like client, company code, plant. All of these are definitely used by enterprise asset management by the PM module. Uh, but there are also some specific organization units in this module. One is called maintenance plant. Now the name maintenance plant is a little misleading. It seems to indicate that maintenance plant is a plant that performs maintenance activities. In fact, that is not true. Maintenance plant is a plant that could potentially require maintenance. Okay, that is a plant which has assets that may need to be maintained. That's what is a maintenance plant. Now, why did they say this? Don't all plants require uh, maintenance? Well, the reason they've got this like this in, in SAP is that in SAP, a plant need not necessarily be a manufacturing organization or a manufacturing entity. Now, we already know from earlier modules that SAP uses the word plant in a very flexible kind of way. So, for example, uh, if you have a consulting company and the consulting company has offices in several places, each of those offices would be actually called as a plant. Okay, even though it's not manufacturing anything. So a plant in a very general sense for SAP is uh, an entity that is used in either providing products or services. Okay, so even in, when you provide service from some entity that's called as a plant. Therefore, there is a need to distinguish between those plants that require maintenance and those plants which are not really manufacturing plants and therefore do not need the support of this plant maintenance module. So that's what is a maintenance plant, a plant that requires maintenance or that might require maintenance. So that's one important organization level in this module. 
Another important organization level is called as a location. And we'll see this later on as we progress. Uh, and of course, there are maintenance work centers. Now, in manufacturing, we've already seen work centers, right? So work centers could be machines, groups of machines, or a, a person or a group of people, right? So work center is anything that has production capacity in general. Maintenance work centers are work centers that are used for the purpose of plant maintenance. Okay. Uh, so that's why you see here example of work center is actually not a machine but a mechanic because a work center can be a person because the person has capacity to perform work so it's just like a machine okay so there are another important organization level in plant maintenance is called maintenance planning plant as opposed to a maintenance plant a maintenance planning plant is one that performs planning for maintenance activities as opposed to planning for production activities okay now maintenance planning plants are essentially plants that do this planning purpose okay so they're also regular plants in fact they are themselves maintenance plants but in addition to their normal role as a plant they also perform the planning of maintenance activities for other plants this will become clear shortly Okay, so there are several organization options you have for maintenance. Okay, so here we see three plants, plant 1200, plant 1300, and plant 1000. There are three plants. Let's assume they're all in the same company code for now. Okay, so what this is showing us is that plant 1200 doesn't do any planning of its own maintenance activities okay so when it has a maintenance requirement the requirement is actually carried out by plant 1000 so plant 1000 is a maintenance planning plant of course it's a plant regular plant but it's also a maintenance planning plant and it's also a plant that has maintenance workshops which means it carries out the maintenance work as well so it does the planning and execution of maintenance activities and plant 1200 relies on plant 1000 for both planning and execution of its maintenance activities. Now plant 1300 relies uh, on plant 1000 for planning and for some of its execution, but some of the execution of maintenance it also carries out by itself because it has workshops. Okay, so it is capable of doing some amount of execution activity but for others, it may rely on other uh, on plant thousand for maintenance execution. Okay. Now, of course, uh, there are also materials that need to be maintained for plant maintenance, spare parts and things like that. Okay. So once again, the spare parts and other things are also maintained at the maintenance planning plant. Okay. So that is why you see in plant one thousand, the spare parts the material inventory of spare parts is maintained. Okay, now SAP allows us to have decentralized planning and execution of maintenance in which every plant will do its own planning and execution, or you could have it centralized, which is one plant does all the planning and execution of maintenance for all the plants, or it could be some combination. You know, you've got a few plants doing both planning and maintenance and so on and so forth. Whatever combination works is fine. So those are the things that SAP allows okay so here we are just seeing a description of what i've just spoke about okay now maintenance work centers are work centers that are used for maintenance purpose purposes not for manufacturing purposes but for maintenance purposes so again it can be a machine or a group of machines or person or a group of people and there are several roles associated with maintenance work centers so for example you may have a maintenance activity and you may say this is the responsible work center or the executing work center and so on and so forth. You can read more about this in the course notes. Okay, so again work center. Here we are talking about a maintenance work center, but other than that, it's identical to production work centers that we had spoken about earlier. So they maintain various default values for various tasks. 
they maintain costing information which is one hour of this work center costs how much they have you know available capacity scheduling etc etc okay so everything that you need to maintain for a work center is all there okay so that's so far as organization levels for maintenance plant maintenance course here we are looking at organization levels for customer service okay so again for customer service you have a planning plant and within the planning plant there could be several planner groups which is set of people who perform the plans uh, perform the uh, planning for customer service and you've got a bunch of work centers where customer service is actually executed and within work centers of course you could have employees who are attached to those work centers so that's broadly speaking the organization structure for service okay so a plant which does customer service is really a customer service center okay a uh, planning plant is one that also does the planning okay so that's in so far as organization elements or levels go okay now technical objects are important things in plant maintenance and technical objects are basically objects that require maintenance those are technical objects and of course technical objects are installed in plants they require maintenance okay so technical objects could be equipment in this case you're seeing a forklift as an equipment or they could be serial numbers okay now what is the difference between equipment and serial numbers well you may say this is just the difference between material and a serial number so for example in your plant suppose you are using a particular material let's say the material you are using is you know a 60 watt bulb okay so your 60 watt bulb 60 watt fluorescent light that's material Okay, that's a generic description of a material. But of course, these 60 watt fluorescent lights are installed in hundreds of different places within the organization. But there's still only one material. These are all different occurrences of that same material. Okay, so those individual pieces are called serial numbers. Now for some, of course for bulbs, you're not going to seriously track individual serial numbers to say, well, which serial number of bulb is installed in which location but for bigger equipment so for example you may have a material called uh, whatever half horsepower pump okay that's just your generic material uh, you know Siemens half HP pump now you may have 20 of these pumps installed at different locations in your plant each of those pumps has a specific serial number okay so that serial number identifies an individual piece of material and in plant maintenance it's important to know specifically which piece of material you're talking about which piece of equipment you're talking about so that's what is a serial number and that's the connection between equipment and serial number okay so that's the second technical object the third kind of technical object is a functional location okay functional location identifies a place a place where equipment is installed that's what is a functional location as opposed to talking about equipment functional location identifies where an equipment is installed okay that's the difference between those two so for example you may say we require uh, repairs on a pump that is located in this particular part of the plant okay that's what is a functional location we'll see more about it shortly bill of material is really not a technical object but all of these technical objects have bills of materials so for example if you have a piece of equipment it'll have a bill of material because when you want to perform maintenance on an equipment you're going to have to tear it down you're going to have to put it together you're going to have to change a part to do all of that you need to know what it's comprised of what are the different parts it has how many of what type of part how are these things put together the diagram that goes with the assembly diagram for this equipment and so on so that's what is a bill of material for a technical object this is different from a manufacturing bill of material that tells us how to make something here 
it's more a bill of material intended for maintenance okay so functional location as we've already pointed out is a place where equipment might be installed and you can define functional locations in many different ways you can define them spatially so for example uh, if jubilee hall were a manufacturing plant then you could say the first floor is a functional location the second floor is a functional location okay that would be a spatial definition of a functional location or in a in a different context a building might be a functional location okay or you could define functional location in terms of the technical characteristics okay rather than saying level one level two or floor one floor two floor three you may say uh, you know it's the uh, uh, whatever the air conditioned uh, plant area or you could say it's the uh, you know pollution free area of the plant and so on okay so that would be a technical definition of what this functional area is all about or you could talk about it from a functional point of view meaning what role it plays in the plant so for example you could say uh, the distillation area of the plant or the cooling area of the plant or the of the furnace and so on okay so that would be a functional definition of the of a functional location now there is no hard and fast rule as to how you take your plant and break it down into functional locations you could do it in whatever way that suits you okay but essentially what it is is just a way to take this whole plant area and identify each location within the plant area and as the diagram already indicates to you this is a hierarchical definition so again going back to our jubilee hall example so you may say at the top level you've got jubilee hall that's a functional location now the first floor second floor third floor fourth fifth and sixth floors are each separate functional locations within the first floor room 112 room 139 room 138 they are also they could also be functional locations right so you can see how this is a hierarchical structure same thing applies to a plant as well now just to stretch the seton hall or jubilee hall example a little further uh, maybe we have we've got a lot of equipment in our various classrooms for example projectors dvd players and other things right so the the mechanism that we use for the screen now if this were a plant and we needed to do plant maintenance then we would need we would need to know the location of each of these equipment and the functional location is what will help us to identify the location of each equipment the serial number will help us to identify specifically which individual projector are we talking about and so on okay that's the idea but of course the notion of a bomb for a functional location doesn't really apply in our particular case but it's possible okay so that's the idea of a functional location the main purpose is to physically locate objects and to structure a technical unit for maintenance a technical system into units for maintenance purposes okay now why does an organization require functional locations within an sap system well it's required because you want to track the execution of maintenance tasks you want to keep a record of you know how much work was performed on each functional location and then you can say well we are having lots of problems in this functional location this functional location is free of problems all kinds of analysis and so on okay so you need that and of course you need it just for tracking where things are and there is a functional location master record within sap which defines the characteristics of a particular functional location and it has several uh, views like general view the location view organization view and the structure view okay and there's some examples of information that is maintained for functional location for example equipment usage classification you know now what classification is from our life cycle data management module you know drawings and things like that any texts uh, measurement points and counters that exist at that particular functional location for example the functional location could be using equipment uh, could be using water or could be using natural gas right so there could be counters or meters that measure 
how much of water or gas is being used in that functional location, right? So all of these things are part of a functional location. Okay, structure indicator is basically uh, information about which is the bill of material for this functional location. As I've already pointed out, that functional location is hierarchical. And I gave you an example of Jubilee Hall as a functional location with every floor being one level below Jubilee Hall and then below that each room in a floor being a functional location. Here we are talking about a different example. Here you've got C1 is a clarification plant within let's say some process uh, manufacturing and C1M is for mechanical cleaning and C1B is for biological cleaning. Those are two functional locations within this clarification plant, right? So you may think of this clarification plant as one large building and uh, C1M and C1B might be two different parts of this large plant. Now within C1M mechanical cleaning, there could be further entities inside it. For example, the sand trap and the oil fat trap. And within each of these, there could be further entities. So this is just a hierarchical breakdown of the plant itself into smaller and smaller units. Okay, that, that's the idea of a functional location. And notice we are talking about functional locations and then there's also this structure for each functional location c1 c1m c1m01 c1m02 then here you see c1m01 hyphen 1 c1m01 hyphen 2 etc so you can see the pattern here that uh, that is employed here okay now here there's a mistake it shouldn't be k1b it should also be c1b c1b etc so these are mistakes where they have k1s in place of c1s Okay, now that thing that you see here, which identifies a functional location, that is called as a, a structure indicator. Okay, that's a functional location structure, and it can be a maximum of 40 characters in SAP. I don't know why they have the limit, but the point of it is just by looking at that structure indicator for a functional location, you can immediately find out exactly where it is. So you know that this is under C1. It's under biological and it's under, uh, you know, filtering station, etc., etc. Okay. So that's a very succinct indication of where in the hierarchy a particular functional location fits. Okay. So uh, the coding template tells you what is the basic format of this functional location. We'll see here. Okay. So the structure indicator of the functional location is here. This is the coding template. And for example, a coding template might look like this. What this tells you is that the first, this is an example structure indicator, okay? Uh, a coding template for a structure, a functional location structure, okay? Uh, so it tells you that the first character has to be an alphabetic character, that A stands for that. The second character must be numeric character. So after that, you've got a dash, so it must have a dash and again so on and so forth. X is alphanumeric, it can be a number or a character. Okay, and uh, it, it also, you also have hierarchical levels that tell you where a new hierarchical level begins. Okay, so this tells you that the first level is identified by an alphabetic and a number. The second level is identified, of course, by the first level followed by a dash followed by an alphabet. That's the second level and so on. So these hierarchy levels tell you uh, where the next level of the hierarchy begins. For example, to go back here, these are the hierarchical levels. Okay, this is the top level C1. This is the next level C1 hyphen M. So for example, hyphen M is hyphen A. Okay, that's the second level. So you see there level two. And then hyphen M01, so A, N, N, here. This is the second, uh, the third level ends here. Okay, so the third level ends at hyphen M01 and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the idea of a structure indicator. Okay, now the structure indicator is this, C1M, 
C1, uh, B02, 1A, etc. The coding template is just the generic format for the structure indicator. Okay, so here you've got the actual location number for a functional location. Okay, and this location number is based on this coding template. Now in SAP, when you create a functional location, you simply give its location number like C1M01-2. Okay, automatically based on uh, the existing functional locations, SAP will put the new functional location under the appropriate place. This is what they call as automatic assignment upon creation. That is, you create a functional location based on the location number that you give, it automatically gets assigned to the correct position in the hierarchy. So you don't really have to traverse the hierarchy and then create the new functional location. Okay, so here we are looking at the example of equipment, which is one of the one type of technical object. And of course, equipment can be a means of production, can be a machine, for example, a lathe, or it could be a means of transport, a forklift truck, or a, even a car, a truck, a van, etc. It could be a test equipment, some kind of a meter, or anything, a meter, a scope, anything, or it could be a production resource or tool. Or they might even be customer devices, that is devices that belong to the customer, which have been sent to us for repair or maintenance or whatever, right? Even buildings and other things can be equipment, systems, system parts, vehicles, all of these could be considered as equipment for plant maintenance purposes. And of course, we've already seen that an equipment is installed in a functional location, okay? Uh, now, it is possible that if you perform, you might perform inventory management for equipment. Why might you do that? Well, let's say in your, you're, you're running a large refinery and you use, so let's say the half horsepower pump that I, was, I talked about earlier. You use these half HP pumps in many, many different places within your plants. Let's say uh, there are 200 of these installed. And uh, of course, routinely they break down. You have to replace them and so on. So what you might actually do is to maintain the spare parts, uh, maintain 50, 60, 100 units of this particular pump in spare part. So that when something breaks down, you go take it out from the spare part, take it out, uh, take out the spare one from storage, install it, take out the old one, the broken one, repair it, and then put it back in storage. Okay, so therefore you, you might do inventory management for equipment. And if you do that, then uh, it can be, the equipment can also be linked to a material. That is, you may have a material number for it, you may have a serial number for it, and so on. Okay, why do you create equipment? Well, you want to track the performance of individual pieces of equipment, you want to record the maintenance task, etc., etc. You want to record the costs that you have incurred on a particular uh, equipment, and things like that. Okay, and just like we said for functional location, there's a master record for every piece of equipment and it has all of the similar kinds of information. Okay, uh, now when you install and dismantle equipment, of course, you know that equipment is installed in functional locations. So you may install it or you may dismantle it. If it is linked to material, then it can automatically be placed into storage or removed from storage. In other words, what we're saying is, suppose you've got an equipment and you also have a material number for it. When you take it out of a functional location, then automatically you could say that it goes into storage. Okay, that is the inventory. Amount of uh, material on hand in inventory can be incremented so that uh, that material goods movement can be automated. Similarly, when you install an equipment in a functional location, then automatically the system can take care of the fact that it came from inventory and it can do the necessary postings. Serial numbers, we've already spoken about this. Serial numbers identify individual pieces of a material. Okay, so your half HP pump may be just a material that you have, but the particular half HP pump that is on the table is one half HP pump with a particular serial number 
another one has a different serial number. Okay, or in the context of Seton Hall, PC support handles lots of laptops. So they may say uh, the Lenovo T510 is one kind of laptop we deal with, right? So that's a generic thing. And they may have a lot of information about that particular model of laptop. But 200 students or 500 students may have been issued that particular laptop, not that specific laptop, that type of laptop. I have one, you have one, somebody else has another. And of course, each of these has its own unique serial number. That's what is a serial number associated with material. And the reason we're looking at it here, of course, is equipment can be connected to material and equipments have serial numbers. Okay, so serial numbers are different from material numbers. So here you see an example. You've got a material number, which is PC. Uh, the material name is PC. The number may be R1001. And this company may have many different units of this same material. And each unit, of course, will have its own specific serial number. So there's another material called screen whose number is R1140. And there are different serial numbers of that material as well. Okay. Of course, serial numbers can repeat across materials as you're seeing here. Okay. The same serial number can occur for different materials. Why? Because you have uh, you know, uh, your uh, half HP pump number 50, lathe number 50. Okay. So the, the combination of material number and serial number, that is unique. Right. You cannot have the same serial number for the same material multiple times then, of course, you won't be able to individually identify each piece, right? But the serial number per se can repeat for multiple materials. Okay, so this is what we're talking about, equipment numbers and serial numbers. Equipment number is just a material number. Serial number identifies the particular equipment. Okay, so there's a master record maintained for each serial number separately so that you can track. Uh, how much did we pay for this? When did we buy it? How, when was it last maintained? How much of maintenance? What is the maintenance history for this, etc., etc.? You can maintain all kinds of information about it, about it. Okay. Now, till now, we've only looked at bill of materials for manufacturing, which is material bond. Bill of material for making a material. But of course, when you're doing maintenance, you may also require bills of material, as I've briefly discussed earlier. For example, you've got a functional location. Now, you need to know, if you want to perform maintenance on this, how exactly is this functional location assembled? What are the individual items that are involved in there? How are they put together? Or if you're going to maintain uh, uh, an equipment, then you're going to have to open it out and put it back again. You need to know exactly what are the components, how they are assembled. So that is what is called as a maintenance bomb. And it's used to understand the structure of the object. It is used for spare parts planning for equipment because you, you, you have to know what are all the components and therefore you can plan the spare parts. And it can also be used for spare parts planning in task list. What they're talking about is uh, spare parts planning for routine maintenance. And here they're talking about spare parts planning for breakdown maintenance. Okay, So there are many different types of maintenance bombs. Material bomb, equipment bomb, functional location bomb. Now you can use a material bomb for maintenance. Sometimes that is done, which is typically done if the same type of equipment is installed in many different places. Again, the half HP pump that I'm talking about. So in this case, you've got a half HP pump. You're using it in hundreds of different places in your plant. And obviously, there's no sense in maintaining a separate bill of material for each of these different units of the same basic same pump that you're maintaining in many different places. Why? They're all the same. So there's no need to maintain a separate bill of material for each serial number. So in that case, what you might do is to make this into a material, create a material bomb for that material, and then, of course, you now have the, the bomb for each serial number, which is basically the same material. Okay, So it is possible to use a material bomb for maintenance purposes, and you do this, as I've already pointed out, when you have many similar technical objects to be maintained. 
These are all the phases in corrective maintenance. One is called as maintenance notification, which is just saying, well, something happened. There's been a breakdown. You need to do something about this. This is where it is. And this is the basic description. Then once that is done, you do the planning for maintenance. And then, of course, you uh, control, which is you release the order and then authorize the work to be done, etc. And then actually you perform the work and then you complete the maintenance process. OK, now at this point, it's worth pointing out that just like other SAP processes, in most SAP processes, you will have a preliminary step, which is not binding. It's more or less like an initiation step, like a purchase requisition which is not a purchase order, it's a purchase requisition saying, I want some material. Now, it doesn't mean that things will actually get bought unless it's converted into a purchase order, nothing is going to happen. So that's what I call as a preliminary step or a sales inquiry or a planned order and so on, right? So all of these are preliminary steps. And the next formal step is the creation of an order, purchase order, sales order, production order, right? That is where the formal step begins. In the corrective maintenance process also, you have a similar structure. The first step, like a sales inquiry or a purchase order, purchase requisition, that is called as a maintenance notification. Okay. And the actual maintenance work gets carried out once you create a maintenance order. Okay. So that's the difference. Maintenance notification, maintenance order. 